Shalom Chavrim, I'm Stephen Ben Danoon, and you are watching Israeli News Live. We have uh, Brother Aaron here with us, and we'll have him recording here in just a second. Uh, just want to get with you and update you about the different events that are taking place in and around the world, especially those events that are happening around Israel. So I have Brother Aaron uh, on with us to talk about some of those things there. And then uh, later in the news here, we will go into some of the uh, conferences that were going on still. Yeah, we've got one more in North Carolina, one in Indianapolis, Indiana, and a new one that we've set up in Atlanta, Georgia. So we hope you'll be able to meet us on these different conferences that we're at there. And uh, also, we've got a little, uh, little clip here we're going to play for you right near the end of the news broadcast. Brother Rick out of uh, Houston, Texas, who's a uh, former Navy. Um, pretty, pretty, pretty good ways on up in there in the Navy. We won't discuss all those details as of yet, but very interesting take he brought in about Israel and the conflict there with Gaza. Anyway, Brother Aaron, if you can take, and uh, I don't know how I got that in the middle of the screen, but... <laughs> All right, there we go. Gotcha. Uh, Brother Aaron, what are you seeing that is happening right now from, from your perspective of the events surrounding Israel? Well, what I see going on right now is that uh, the mainstream media is picking up the fact that the uh, Israeli, the uh, Islamic Caliphate, as they call it, the, uh, let's see, Islamic, uh, I forget the name of it now, it just slipped my mind. Anyway, the ISIS group, they're, they're starting to infiltrate groups around Israel, such as the uh, Hamas and uh, I would even say Hezbollah. Uh, they all getting all kinds of uh, uh, interwoven. Uh, they're getting really interwoven. And, and right. they're finally picking up that um, information on the IsraeliNationalNews.com. It says the, uh, the IS activity or my mind is just shutting down. That's okay. The, and I know in ISIS with Gaza, of course, ISIS is already claiming that they have, uh, in no. some of the rocket attacks, they've claimed 13 lives uh, uh, from, from Israelis with what they're doing. And, and by the way, speaking of that, that is, uh, according to Barry uh, Hamesh, uh, an Israeli journalist, he had actually stated that this is what kind of kicked off the war to begin with. He believes that the oh, ISIS... Yeah, he believes ISIS was in behind the kidnapping of the three Israeli teens, which is kind of ironic with his, uh, with his thoughts on that. But as he pointed out, when Hamas normally kidnaps the teens, or kidnaps any, not teens, but in this case, but any Israelis whatsoever, it's done for political purposes. It's done for they're wanting something, they're going to kidnap someone in exchange for a prisoner release or whatever the case may be. But in this case... The kidnapper, kidnappers immediately murdered their victims, which is something yeah. that ISIS is doing. Now, that mind and thought, uh, I've got, got a, a message today from, from Sister Esther. I'm hoping to get her on in the morning. Uh, she says that, uh, that, that the ISIS is really doing a major campaign against the Christian people. Uh, doesn't matter. Yeah. They, they say even children now are being murdered yeah. by ISIS. Women and children, yeah. uh, they're just a very ruthless group. And of course, Obama's talking about coming in and doing, doing an attack, a strike on uh, Iraq against ISIS, which really is just a pinprick. I mean, I guess he's just trying to do that to save face in the light of the events that are happening against the Christian groups that are there in Iraq. You know, I've been really monitoring the uh, ISIS, the uh, Islamic State group, and what what I see is this absolute brutality. Yes. That just goes far beyond anything that, that we've seen in modern history. It goes all the way back to the last uh, Islamic Caliphate, way back in history. And they're basically just copying what, what has already been done. And it, it's no surprise. It's no surprise because you can read history, you can see what's going on now. And one thing I just really want to, to people to realize is what they're doing in Iraq, what they're doing in Syria, that's what they're going to do around Israel. That's what they're going to try to do all across the world. And it doesn't matter. Borders don't matter to them at all because according to them, the world is theirs. Right. So there is no borders. There, there are no national lines. Right. Well, as you yeah. mentioned to me that right before we started the newscast, they're threatening Turkey now as well. Now, Turkey, as we know, and this is something that uh, Brother Rick had pointed out to me before, uh, we 
originally discussed Turkey and Israel with the with the flotilla that was headed towards Israel, yep. and that is that uh, Turkey had they're one they 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 have nuclear weapons, they have a very well very trained organized military, so. Uh, you know, ISIS right now is pretty much a renegade group, although they're growing momentum. My suspicion is that they're going to attack Israel. This is what I think the whole... And of course, like you said, they're wanting to join Gaza. They're wanting to join the Palestinians. It would be easier for them to get into to, to the West Bank and fight Israel than anything. And if the Vatican is behind this group, as the Vatican has been known to do before, and I believe they are in... in you know, in the United States, of course, we have uh, pictures with some of the leaders of uh, this, the leaders of this group, ISIS, with uh, John McCain. There's pictures that have been taken with some of the leaders there. Uh, who's who's really the ones behind this? We know the U.S. trains a lot of uh, people in these regions, and then later they turn against them. Uh, so I, I don't know what we're going to have this coming on. And, and now they're doing this. Uh, I saw on Israel's national news they're, they're, they have a, a Canadian uh, coming in uh, to do a, uh, let me just see if I can pull that up real fast there, who's, who's behind the, uh, oh gosh, let's see if I even still have that on the screen here. Um, that's, in fact, that's the ISIS article. Those of you guys that will be watching this here, uh, this is on Arut Shiva's, uh, or Israel's national news. It's called Arut Shiva, uh, and it says ISIS is, is actively joining Gaza uh, terror war on Israel. Evidence shows, uh, let me put, we'll put uh, Brother Aaron right here in the upper right part of the screen, involvement in attacks in, on Israel. Groups claim rockets attacks list 13 casualties. As Operation Protective Edge holds in a temporary ceasefire, evidence has come out revealing the extent of the extremist Sunni group, Islamic uh, State's uh, uh, ISIS, formerly, uh, IS, formerly ISIS, involvement in the terror war against Israel from the Hamas stronghold of Gaza. Terror organized association with the IS and Al Qaeda have been proven to be joining the fight against Israel and Gaza, firing rockets on Israeli civilian population centers and attacking IDF troops. On Sunday, the uh, Abdullah uh, Azaman brigades declared it had fired a uh, Grad missile towards the Israeli town of uh, Mafhalim, located near uh, southern Gaza. I'm trying to do this without having to look close because without my glasses, uh, but you can see it on your screens there. The announcement comes after similar ones last month by Ansar uh, Bayt al Machadis and uh, Maya Shura al uh, Arabic names are harder to pronounce Muhaddin organizations. I just kind of give you a little insight there. But uh, actually, what I'm looking for though was another article there. Oh, here we go, right here. It's actually, this is not the article I'm looking for, but it's uh, Dr. Uh, Shabazz. Uh, he's a Canadian. Now, this Canadian, Dr. Shabazz, has been uh, given the authority to head a, 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 a UN study on the human rights in Gaza to see if Israel has broken uh, uh, the war, the war, you know, however the war is supposed to go. And the funny thing is, even in this article here in 2012, he's accusing Israel already and, and, is, is in, and uh, says that uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu should be indicted for war crimes. And now they're picking an anti-Semitic man to head up the UN's efforts to determine whether or not Israel is guilty of war crimes. It's just absurd. I mean... Israel, you know, Brother Aaron, Israel is just, everyone is against Israel, period. I mean, it's getting worse and worse all the time. I mean, we, we were here in uh, the city we were in here in, in Georgia uh, as we were coming out. I put a little sign on the back of the car, just temporarily. I had it up there. It said IsraelReturns.com. And there were some Arabic people that came out, and they were infuriated with the name Israel on a vehicle. Uh, so I told my wife, it's a rental vehicle, I better take this sign off before we end up having a car firebombed in the parking lot. Oh my gosh, terrible, brother. Go ahead, update us on some other things, brother Aaron, that you see. Yeah, um, I'm, just, I'm just really glad that the article uh, hit uh, the mainstream media about uh, the ISIS group um, actually coming in and, and starting to work in the Gaza Strip. 
And the, the other thing that I'm wondering about and, and really curious about uh, is Hezbollah. And I'm really curious what they're going to do because I know, you know, Hezbollah is, is grouped more with Iran, but, you know, if they just get the nod, it, all they have to do is say, okay, you go, you work with that guy and you work with that guy, and then Israel is literally surrounded, yes. literally surrounded. And there's, there's no way that Israel, you, you know, you, you back in, it's really into a wall, and you're going to have some fireworks, and that's just how it works. It's just how it is. Um, right. The anti-Semitism is just going out of control, uh, just all over the world. I have an article in front of me about uh, Sweden. You know, you, you don't normally think of Sweden. <laughs> you know, I mean, honestly, and you, you've got Norway just going out of control. Um, it's just insane. It's insane what's going on. And, and really, really when you look at it and when you see it, you can't really see what's linking it all together because it's a spiritual force behind it. It That's really right. truly is. That's exactly right. And so, and with that spiritual force going across the entire globe, and we're just seeing, as we would say in the Christian world, the manifestation of this happening right in front of our eyes. Amen. Amen. On the flotilla, brother, um, I'm just, okay, I think I found maybe where you have, just trying to see if I could find an article where you'd brought the flotilla up. Uh, last yeah, year. They, and they basically are trying to have a, re, a redo of the uh, 2010 flotilla. And the problem with that is they're going to learn from the mistakes that happened last time. And Israel, on the other hand, will have no choice but to confront this flotilla. And so what they're going to do is they're going to, they're going to try and use what happened last time and right. multiply it, in my opinion. They're going to try and make it even worse. They're going to try and make Israel have no choice but to confront this group. Let's take, let's take a look real quick. I have that up on the screen now. And this is uh, Israel's National News, uh, Rut Shiva, uh, an article that they have here. Uh, IHH confirms new Gaza flotilla. Turkish group says it will send a new flotilla of ships to break Israel's siege of Gaza four years after the uh, Maramara incident. The Turkish group, and they can see on the screen here, Brother Aaron, as, as well as they can see yourself there, um, yeah. The IHH said on Monday it would send a new flotilla of ships. Not, and this time it's not one, it's saying ships plural, yeah. to break Israel's siege of Gaza four years after the deadly storming of its vessel by Israeli commandos, according to AFP. IHH will, will organize uh, the first flotilla said in a statement quoted by the news agency that activists from 12 countries had met in Istanbul and taken the decision to send the ships in the shadow of the latest Israeli aggression on Gaza. Now, I'm going to definitely have to have Rick come in on with us on this particular case here because he's very knowledgeable of world uh, militaries. As most governments are uh, uh, complicit, their respons responsibility falls on civ uh, civilian society to challenge the Israeli blockade on Gaza, it said. The AIHH would hold a press conference on Tuesday. It added the group is considered to be close to the Turkish government. Uh, no, no doubt. Hello. Well, you know, uh -huh. here's the whole thing. And I've had people comment before on our news channel saying that, you know, this is an act of war to have a blockade of a country. Uh, well, Gaza is such a tiny place to begin with. Why cannot the Arab people take in the, the, this, these small little groups of people in Israel? Israel the, the state of Israel is a sliver of land. What, the side of, size of Rhode Island? And yet there's enough land between all these countries, Turkey, uh, Iraq, Iran, Syria, Jordan, Lebanon, Saudi Arabia. Take all these countries, you know, Libya, e Egypt, and they've got as much land as the United States. In fact, I have a better idea. There Excuse me. I, I mean, yeah. really, this would stop the problems because, you know, the funny thing is, even when Israel was at war, uh, to, 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 to declare their independence, 
they would not allow the Palestinians to escape. Just like what's going on in Gaza right now, Hamas, when Israel was sending the leaflets to, to warn the citizens to, to back out of the way, they're coming in to deal with Hamas, yeah. Hamas would not allow the citizens to leave. They wanted them to die. It's hard to be a news reporter without being passionate. I, I hate this. Uh, you know, it's kind of like Steve. 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 Uh, what, what's Steve's name on Newsmax? Uh, oh gosh, I forget his last name right offhand. But he's yeah. very passionate as well. So, and he stands for Israel. God bless him. Uh, Malsberg. Yeah. Steve Malsberg. The Steve, there as they go. say, Malsberg show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, all right, brother. Let's wrap up. What? Uh, any, what else you got that you that you see going? Benjamin, you're watching the Israeli news live. Uh, you know, as we know, uh, in Israel there was a, um, a, a truce sign recently, uh, another 72 hours, of course, that was broken. Uh, I've been keeping up with it in the background, Brother Aaron, uh, with our website, has been updating you guys on the news. I thank God for him. Uh, but while we were here in Houston, I had the privilege of meeting Brother Rick. Brother Rick is going to be joining us on some of the news segments coming up. He's got a military background, very knowledgeable there. We're going to be looking at the, these military issues more from, uh, from a prophetic side of it. And I think Rick is ideal for that uh, because he was conquered by the Russians, uh, quite <laughs> honestly. Uh, I had to say as a joke there because uh, his, his precious wife, uh, Sister uh, o o Ola, okay. Olia. Olia, I have to get that right. I'm not good at those names, even though that I was also conquered by the uh, Russians as well. Uh, my wife would say Slovak. She's going to correct me on that. But anyway. Uh, wonderful, uh, uh, lovely wife and, and daughter, and uh, so we're going to be spending more time together, uh, be doing a little bit on the news to start with, but a little bit later, God really deals with uh, Brother Rick in, in an awesome way as far as the revelations that God is giving him, uh, and we're looking to start a program on live stream that will be coming up in the next couple of months where we will be sitting down with people like Brother Rick and others and talking about the biblical uh, aspects, the environment, the prophetic scene that is happening in the world today. And with that in mind, Brother Rick, uh, give me some of your own thoughts about <laughs> Israel and what's happening right now. Well, first of all, thanks. God thanks bless for you. having me, Stephen. My thoughts on Israel, this is tragedy. Uh, it's sad, but at the same time, it's exciting. Amen. At the same time. Um, I would like to do a little more research because I believe all, all this that is playing out now has played out before. I think some of the things that are going to play out have played out before, have been written about uh, in Tanakh, most of it, and in the New Testament as well. Um, and I'm just hoping they, I know that we know that peace treaties are going to be signed, but we also know that they're not supposed to be doing that. Exactly and right. And so, I'd like to just not get too much into detail right now on the first we're, we're one, gonna save but it. we're uh, going to save, save, save some of it. Yes. Um, but I'm, I'm deeply concerned, and of course, it's a it's a tragic situation with the loss of life. But. Amen. It is. It is on both sides, and and you know whether it's the children in Gaza that are being used um, by Hamas, uh, and it puts the Israelis in an awkward position. Uh, I have. One of the things that I've brought up, though, because there's been so much against Israel in regards to uh, Hamas being, uh, doing what they're doing, but everyone is blaming Israel that uh, even Obama is for saying, you know, you're not doing enough to, to save the innocent lives of, of the civilians there. And for me, it's a little bit of a hypocritical statement because the United States and, of course, Great Britain under Churchill, when they dealt with Dresden, look at all the loss of life there, not to mention Japan. Well, let me, let, let's put it in a different perspective, Stephen. When, <clears throat> when he says that the Israelis aren't doing enough to protect innocent life, is he referring to the Israelis? Because they're really, they're going overboard in Gaza, in my opinion. Yes. They're sending leaflets, they're making phone calls, and at the same time, missiles are coming in. So let's take a little different perspective. Which children aren't they protecting at this point? By doing too much, they're risking their own people, okay? And it's like... People refer to Gaza as the occupied territory. It is. But it's being occupied by who? The Egyptians, by the Gazans, by the Jordanians, by the Syrians, by the Lebanese. That's God's territory. It's not theirs, and they are the occupiers. So let's put things in a different light. Absolutely. Forward. And that's my stance. So now you know a Amen. little bit about where I'm coming Amen. from, and we'll move forward from there. Amen. Well, it's, it's great to be with you here and, and get a chance to meet you and your family. And as you see, 
We're going to have some very interesting discussions uh, coming up uh, in the very near future here. So God bless you, Brother Rick. Thank Pleasure you. to be with you. And Baruch Hashem. Well, I wanted to also point out that uh, the uh, United States involvement in Iraq right now with the um, air raids and such, uh, everything is pointed toward the, uh, how do you pronounce it, the Yazdi or Yazdi or whatever, the, this, this minority group. And it is completely, absolutely disregarding the biblical uh, supporters of Israel, the Christians in the area, are just totally turning their head. There are no yeah. reports in the last day mentioning that within this group are Christians also. And something I wanted to mention, and this, this is a real gruesome fact, but I wanted to point it out because this is the essence of this uh, Islamic state, is one of the things they do is they will they will kill the uh, the the what they call the the heathens you know and all of that right. but when it comes to the Christians and when it comes to the Jews they're in the same group for for the Islamic state when it comes to the Christians and Jews they don't just kill them they slaughter them and they collect their blood and they sell it and they mm -hmm. sell it because they are told that if, if, so, if uh, let's say, somebody in, in another state, another uh, Islamic state is, is wealthy enough to buy that vial of blood, if they wash their hands in that blood, then they are taking part in the jihad and their sins are forgiven. My and that God. is the essence, the essence of this. There was a sister, uh, uh, a, a nun, I can't remember her name, but she did an in-depth study and she interviewed people and this is what's actually going on and I stumbled across it. It was a terrible, terrible picture of, of this happening to somebody, them collecting mm. the blood. And they, they use literally, literally blood money. It's literally blood money. We think blood diamonds and such and such, it doesn't hold a candle to what's going on right now, right now in Iraq. They're killing the Christians. Anyone who's a Christian, cut their throat, collect the blood, and then fund their war with that blood. That is the essence. Unbelievable. Of doing. And you know, let yeah. me just mention this in closing as well. We speak about the Christians there. One of the biggest number of Christians that are in these countries here as well. We know the Catholic Church has a lot of uh, believers that they have there, but there are a lot of Muslim people that never got to hear about the gospel before. And Yeshua himself comes and visits these people. And they learn about yes. Jesus because yes. he has visited the people. And they give their lives to the Lord. And these people need your prayers. You know, unfortunately, the Vatican doesn't care if they have their own people slaughtered. That To them, that's kind of like Hamas over there in the Gaza Strip. They don't care. The more that you kill the, the, the Palestinian people, the, the better it looks for them. And it's the same thing, unfortunately, with the Vatican. They're not, they, they, may, they may with their mouth say they care, but they don't. And that's what's sad for the Catholic people that maybe are trying to serve the Lord. And it's the only, that's the only form of Christianity they know. And I know God will see the heart there. But we do need to pray for these people because... God sees them dying, and it's just like the Dark Ages. I mean, we really have reverted back to the Dark Ages. And so pray for them. We love you guys here, and uh, God bless you. Also, one other thing, just in closing, uh, Brother Aaron can tell you this as well on our website, israelreturns.com. We have a calendar there. Brother Aaron has it laid out beautifully. You can see a, a thing of events there. I think it's to the bottom left-hand side of the screen. Um, Tomorrow afternoon, we'll be speaking in Franklin, North Carolina. Now, we did not post the address there because that's at a brother's home. Uh, so if you would like to come, if you send us an email on contacts at israelreturns.com, myself or, or Brother Aaron One will send you the address of where that's at. It is limited seating, so we do need to know who's going to come. Uh, we've already got several people that are coming. Uh, so uh, we might be able to do a few more, but wouldn't be able to do much. It's kind of out in the middle of nowhere. Um, but uh, also in Indianapolis, Indiana, this Friday and Saturday, we'll be speaking there. Details are there. We'll be staying at the Drury Inn Hotel there in Indianapolis. All the details are there on that. 
uh, as well as uh, on Sunday, which I believe is the 17th, we'll be in Atlanta, Georgia. Actually, I think it's called Swanee, Georgia, or something like that. But it's just north of Atlanta. Uh, we have already reserved at 8 p.m. that night. There's a conference room here at the Holiday Inn and Suites Hotel. And uh, we'll be staying here that night anyway. We'll be having a conference here. Uh, you'll actually, if you've never heard my wife speak before, this will be your opportunity to get to hear her speak. We'll be speaking about Israel and prophecy, the events that are happening, uh, as well as talking about women in the Bible, the, the fact that God does not look down on women. Uh, as my own little daughter always says, God loves pink. Very true. Anyway. God bless you, Brother Aaron. Thank you for being with me again tonight. And, uh, and uh, thank God for Brother Aaron and all the work that he does tirelessly. He works on the website and updates on the news and speaks uh, when we're not able to speak on Shabbat Live. Does a wonderful job. And I, and I know so many of you guys are blessed. I noticed on one of his newscasts, 4,000 views. God bless you, Brother Aaron. So, all right. Good evening, friends. Shabbat Shalom, or not Shabbat Shalom, but Shalom.